the big surprises for 2014 include picking up inflation, but at the same time, energy prices going down. So what is surprising about that is usually inflation goes up um, when we see higher energy prices. And we've seen inflation really ticking upwards from late summer to uh, the fall at the same time that energy prices have really fallen. Now, the Bank of Canada recently touched on in its interest rate announcement whether or not it had concerns for inflation. And it, in fact, was not overly concerned. It seems like the bank is, is believing that the higher inflation is going to be compensated for by lower energy prices. Now, some economists are not so convinced. Some of the things that economists are worried about is that with the falling energy prices, we have seen an impact on the Canadian dollar. And the Canadian dollar has become significantly weaker over the fall. Now that's bad news for importers or anyone that's in an import intensive industry. So if I'm a manufacturer and I need some supplies that are coming from uh, the US, let's say, then that's going to increase my costs. And if I have to pass along those costs to the ultimate consumer, that's a potential source for inflation. So inflation is still within the Bank of Canada's target rate of 1 to 3 percent. It's a little bit high. They don't seem all that concerned at this point, but it is causing some economists to wonder whether or not inflation is going to creep even higher. So we've seen energy prices decline, and at the same time we've seen the dollar weaken. There's two sides to that. Of course, if you're a oil producing province, then having lower energy prices is not good news for you. But the fact that all of these commodities are denominated in US dollars helps to cushion that blow somewhat. The other negative about falling energy prices is that the Toronto Stock Exchange has a large number of energy stocks on it. So the market cap of the Toronto Stock Exchange is about 20% driven by energy companies. In contrast, the S&P 500 has only about 8% of energy con uh, companies. So we do have some concerns that the stock market will be hit as a result of falling energy, uh, energy prices. Now, of course, on the other hand, this is good news for consumers. So if you have falling energy prices, consumers are, are getting uh, cheaper prices at the pump. As we enter into winter, we're going to have lower heating costs, and that's going to put more money in the ultimate consumer's pocket. It's also good for manufacturers, uh, and we're seeing some positive increases in manufacturing numbers, numbers, particularly coming out of Ontario and Quebec. And that's definitely good news for this province. In 2015, I would expect that there's going to be moderate growth in GDP. So overall in Canada, we will get uh, hit somewhat by lower energy prices, but that's also good for some of the companies in Canada. So I think that we'll see similar growth to what we saw in 2014, which has ended up being fairly significant at about 2.6%. So I'd, I'd expect similar growth, but I'd expect a shifting across the provinces. So some of the provinces where we haven't seen the high growth, those provinces are going to do better, and then the, some of the energy-rich provinces are going to cool. I do anticipate with the kind of inflation we've seen and with the growth south of the border, that there will be interest rate changes this year. And that's something we haven't talked about for many years. I expect that it'll be coming out of the Fed first, so US interest rates will probably move before Canada does. But even if the, Canada, the Bank of Canada stays the same, consumers will feel the trickle-down effect from an increase in rates in the US. Now, there's also a risk of the housing market cooling. Um, we have heard many warnings about Canadian houses being overvalued, and if that bubble bursts, then the home equity that people believe they have dramatically falls. And so there are dangers of relying on a, a, a consumer, uh, a consumer-fueled economy, even though we are expecting moderate growth in the range of 2.5 to 2.6 percent over the next year. Now, speaking about the provincial outlook, we can finally have some good news for Ontario. What we've seen over the past several years is that Canada's economy has really been led by the energy-rich provinces. So 2014, most expectations are that the highest growth is going to be in Newfoundland and Labrador. Other provinces that have seen substantial goes, uh, growth have been Saskatchewan and Alberta. So finally, we're seeing a little bit of cooling in the energy prices, meaning that the, the users of that energy, predominantly the manufacturers, are benefiting, and that's good news for Ontario. Part of that benefit is that we're seeing some improvement in unemployment rates in Ontario, and that has been a very sticky number to, to try to move. It seems like employers were not quite ready to make that investment in human capital over the past several years as they came out of the recession, and now we're finally seeing that that's moving. So that's definitely better uh, for, for Ontario. Now, anything that's an export-oriented industry is something that's going to do well this year with the combination of the, of the low dollar 
and especially lower energy prices. If I had to look at particular sectors, I would say that it would be uh, exporting of goods and services. Uh, forestry is something that is looking fairly positive because there's more investment going on in the U.S. There's housing starts are starting to pick up. And also exporters of machinery and capital equipment are looking positive as well because the businesses in the U.S. are starting to invest into more capital intensive areas than what we've seen in the past several years. Right now what we've seen is that a lot of our economy has been growing by purchases made at the consumer level. So consumer confidence and retail confidence is high right now and it's as high as it's been, the highest point it's been since 2010. So we have forever seen warnings about the debt level in this country. And the kind of debt we're talking about is not particularly mortgage debt, but it's lines of credit and it's credit card debt. Now, those kinds of debt have particularly high interest rates. And so if our consumers uh, get hit by an interest rate increase, which people are anticipating is going to happen in 2015, then that's really going to hurt them. It's going to hurt their ability to service their debt. Uh, we may see some increase in personal bankruptcies, but it will definitely lower their confidence and it will lower their spending. And because consumers can be, can be fairly fickle, this is going to dramatically change the prospects for the retail environment. So it's fine to have consumers being a driver of the economy, but they can't be the only driver. And we've seen too much reliance on the consumer in the past, and the consumer now has so much debt accumulated that there's no more room for them to spend. If I had to provide advice for Ontario going forward in 2015, I would say to enjoy the, this moment coming up. We've got low energy prices, we've got a low Canadian dollar, that's going to be great news for our manufacturers and our exporters. But I would also say don't be complacent. This is a temporary reprieve. We have $70 oil. I don't anticipate it's going to stay at that level for the entire year coming forward. And some people are anticipating it to raise significantly even by mid-2015. So this gives us some breathing room. It gives us a little bit of time to make sure our houses are in order. Uh, it gives consumers some time to have less pressure at the pumps. They're not paying as much. So use that money to actually save, to pay down some of the debts. And for companies, use that money to invest so that you've increased your efficiency and productivity moving forward. Because when energy prices come up and stabilize to more reasonable levels, we're going to see that this boom that we have with the low energy prices and low dollar may be over.